everybody. I hope that you all are excited. So sorry about the one minute delay. We were working out some technical difficulties. Some of you may have noticed that we switched over to a new webinar platform. So we are not using GoToWebinar anymore. We are now using Zoom, which we um, have really loved so far. Um, but I'm still learning some of the technical things with doing a webinar. Um, if you guys are here and you're hearing me okay and you're seeing the slides on the screen all right, just raise your hand. Thank you, Chris. I saw that. Hey, hey, Lisa. Hey, Patty, Stephanie, Rhonda. So good to have you guys on here. Um, and a few other, other views. I'm seeing you pop up on here. I'm so glad that everybody is um, seeing everything and we are going to get started. I know that a lot of you have been anticipating this um, webinar just for a lot of different reasons. And so um, I am joined today by the wonderful and um, awesome uh, Jonathan Hickman. So I just want to say hi, Jonathan. Hello. And um, we are also going to be introducing um, these topics right here. Um, the best vacation bridge upgrades and how to use them. I know that there's been a lot of anticipation around this. Um, and I just got a message from Chris saying that the sound quality is not very good. Please let me know if they're, um, if it's getting any better, let me know. Um, we obviously would like good sound quality. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on. If any of you guys are experiencing sound issues, go ahead and throw that into the um, into the chat for me. Thank you, Patty, appreciate it. Hey, Mike, it's good to have you. Um, and thank you for letting me know about your sound quality. Chris, you may wanna log off and log back on. Sometimes that, that deals with the Zoom issues from what I can understand. So, but just if you guys deal with any sound issues in the webinar, please feel free to put that in the chat. I watch that religiously during the webinar, so feel free to let me know. Um, all right, so today I am introducing a very special additional guest. So we have Jonathan, who already said hello, um, but we are also introducing Emery Lane, and I'm really excited to introduce Emery to you guys today as your dedicated Vacation Bridge developer. So Emery is the guy that, uh, he's literally the end all be all of all things Vacation Bridge. Um, he's been working really hard on a lot of these updates. So just go ahead and say hi, introduce yourself, Emery, really fast and let everybody know who you are and where you live. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name's Emery, uh, another developer on the team and I'm out here in Ohio. Awesome. Well, so we're going to go ahead and walk through some of this. You're going to hear from both Jonathan and Emery today, and they're going to talk through some of these things. If you guys um, want to leave questions during the webinar, please feel free to do that. Um, some of your questions may be more support and oriented, and if they are, um, I'm going to go ahead and forward those over to help at vrmgr.com because um, we're going to try and keep everything really tight into what we're working on because we have a lot to cover. Um, so we're going to go ahead and um, move through some of this stuff and um, uh, let's go ahead and have Jonathan talk about new portal partners with the vacation bridge so take it away Jonathan okay first of all you guys just glossed over uh, Emery joining us and this is really a, a big deal so I wanted to press on this with his help we're going to be able to add new features meet the needs of our portal partners and fix some long-standing minor bugs that we've not been able to address in the past previously the roles were shared so every single thing that somebody wanted to do they were juggling you know juggling multiple projects multiple things they had to do and now we have someone fully de uh, dedicated to the Vacation Bridge development. So um, we are very excited about this because it means we can progress and do things that we previously couldn't because we didn't have the time to do so. But let me continue and let you know about the new portal partners and such as that. Um, we can't disclose all the new portal partners yet, um, but we do have new portal partners that are going to be made available in 2017. Um, some of those are Canada Stays, Brave Interactive, Rena Beach, Local ATA, On Fast, and Cottage Country are a few. Um, we are going to be bringing on these new portal partners, and you can reach out to them or they can reach out to you if you're interested in their services. And um, 
when it comes to working with uh, third-party companies, it's often a challenge. We work with you know the pre-existing partners, and now we're working with new partners. When it comes to working with new partners, we're going to be coordinating with them as well as any of the property managers that start using their services. Therefore, we need to be sure, uh, just be aware that if there are any um, hiccups along the way, we will be working towards addressing those with both the companies and with the property managers. But they're third parties. So there could be challenges and that. Those are things that, you know, if you're beta testing for them, you have to be aware of. Um, also, uh, when it comes to portal partners, Red Awning has purchased Vacay Hero, just as a, you know, put a trivia, I guess. Um, so be aware that's the case. Um, so if you were previously using Red Awning, um, they are the same as Vacay Hero, but they're not separate portal partners yet so i mean they're not the same portal partner yet so if you see it listed within the vacation bridge as vacay hero it's going to stay that way if you see it as red awning it's going to stay that way it's not being merged together like home away and vrbo are exactly the same and you only see them as one listing or flip key and trip advisor are exactly the same and you only see them as one in this case they will be separate Are you there, Brittany? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I thought you were going to say something else. Oh, no. You I'm just keep letting going. you do your thing. I don't want to interrupt your flow. You oh, okay. Got gotcha. good flow there. <laughs> okay. All right. The platform service upgrade. All right. Our platform has changed. Uh, we were previously on the same platform as other software providers. And by platform, I mean we were all sharing the same API. And a challenge was being able to rapidly develop. When we were making changes, we had to coordinate with other software providers, which didn't allow us to quickly make changes like we wanted. Um, for example, if we said, oh, we want to make this change, we would have to go to these other software providers and say, what are we going to break? You know, they would have to sign off on it. Um, even bug fixes and things like that were really slow to get into place because of these uh, things holding us back. Now we're able to make changes much more rapidly, fix bugs, add features without worrying about breaking other software providers that use the vacation bridge with their property managers. We still have this relationship with the other software partners, but the endpoint API URLs are different that are used by the portal um, partners. So to support this change for property managers using the das dashboard, it was necessary to use a new URL. And it's not needed to use this dashboard, but if you are using the old Vacation Bridge portal dashboard, you will need to begin using this new one. Um, and if you are uh, looking at the screen here, you'll see that it is now, instead of portal dashboard.thevacationbridge.com, it is simply dashboard.vrmvacationbridge.com. It is still the same Vacation Bridge, it's still the same software, but we've moved to faster servers with more um, capabilities. And we believe that that will result in a much better, better performance and issues where there were uh, timeouts and things like that during heavy load times. Those should be uh, a thing of the past. When it comes to logging in to this, when you log in, everything should be exactly the same as it was. That includes your username and password, as well as the data you see. Obviously, it'll be updated. If you try logging into the old one, you may or not be able to log in, and if you were able to log in, things will either be outdated or they may be missing altogether or, you know, your properties not, might not show up. If you notice something strange like that, check the URL, make sure you're using the correct one, keep using the exact same username and password, um, and should be good to go. Um, also, I, um, we have some um, in regards to the previous new portal discussion. We had some uh, debate about you know, non-disclosure agreements, things like that. So there were a lot of questions about Airbnb as a new portal. And while we don't have an integration with Airbnb on the vacation bridge, uh, we've added an iCal link functionality to the VRM system, which will allow properties to have their calendars and availability imported into Airbnb. This isn't the same as uh, the vacation bridge integration, since it doesn't send over all the property information or allow online booking, but it's a start if people wanted to share their calendars with Airbnb. 
And uh, that's located in the VRM system under properties, manage properties, you'll choose your property. And it's under the uh, miscellaneous tab. After you click edit at the very bottom of the screen, you'll see a link that says iCal link. And you can actually copy and paste that into your Airbnb dashboard. But if you are a patient, we have had discussions with the Airbnb and we hope to have an integration with them possibly sometime this fall. So a lot of people have been you know, interested in that. Uh, they've been going through other portal partners to uh, share their information along to get it on to um, the system with uh, Airbnb. But another part of this move to the new platform will allow us to do the development we need to actually integrate with Airbnb as well. I know that a lot of people have expressed excitement about that Airbnb um, potential. So I'm definitely looking forward to um, the fall and having that, you know, hopefully that all works out and we're able to get that done. That would be amazing. So um, perfect. Well, the next thing that we um, had on the agenda to talk about today was the home away filtered messaging. I know this is a key topic for a lot of you. So um, I'm gonna let Jonathan and Emery kind of jump in here. We have some points that we're gonna talk about um, that have to do with the home away filtered messaging. So if you have any questions, you can either put those in the chat. I'm kind of chatting back and forth with um, some of you right now. And if you have questions, you can put them in there and I'll answer them as best I can. And if I am not able to answer them, then I will definitely make sure that you get an answer in the end of the um, webinar in the question and answer section. You can also put those questions into the Q&A section in Zoom and those will go directly to me and I can look at those. So, um, all right, so go ahead, Jonathan and Emery. Let's talk about some of these home away filtered messaging things. Okay, well, Emery doesn't like to talk a lot. He's just a developer, you know, he just sits <laughs> back and types the whole time, so. Um, but I'll go ahead and give uh, an overview of the way that this um, works. And it's going to be an overview, and then I'll go into details about what uh, technically is changing in regards to this. Uh, the basic overview is that HomeAway is stripping client prospect information away during inquiries so that HomeAway can control the prospect. Uh, the system is based solely on your interaction as a property manager with the client, um, but now it's moving towards a way in which uh, that control will be limited. When somebody goes on to HomeAway and submits an inquiry, um, in the past, this inquiry would come to the property manager and the property manager could deal with this in a personal way. But now that's being taken away um, so that HomeAway can control that negotiation. Um, the property managers will still have a way to respond, but HomeAway will behave as a mediator. So let me get into the details of this. Um, first of all, the traveler contact information will be removed in the messages. There is information that we're gonna go over that you will receive from HomeAway in regards to this, but the contact information uh, specific personal to that traveler will be removed. For example, all the to and from email addresses will be removed and it's going to be appearing to come from sender at messages.homeaway.com. Um, so the reply to address will be a string of characters that are unique to that guest. And then the ending portion, of course, will always end in homeaway.com. And the email address for the visitor contact will be obfuscated. Um, so that way it will be a unique address that when you reply to, will go back to the real customer email address. The response rate is gonna be based on the first reply to that inquiry. And they will automatically know the response rate based on getting it back to them at that same address. So they will know that the reply has gotten back to them, so they'll be able to use that to determine the response rate. Any telephone number, website address, email address, or other information, that's not pointing directly to the HomeAway website is gonna be stripped out and removed from the messages on its way to you and on its way back to the guest. Um, this means that you're not gonna be able to match travelers to previous stays or previous bookings and all unique customer information is gonna be stripped. The email address will be tied to HomeAway only, but the, um, there is information that you will be able to get 
And I want to stress um, that this is not changing the information you get during new bookings. So, and I'll go into detail on that as well. But um, also, all HTML will be stripped from messages. It's not necessary to remove the HTML from your autoresponders if you have those set up in the Vacation Bridge Portal dashboard. Um, we recommend that you do go in and remove it though, because if it is there, it could cause alignment issues. And also, you want to consider whether you want to even keep using the autoresponder. Um, line breaks are supported, so if you put like carriage returns, those are going to show up, but the HTML is not permitted. There's no images, there's no bold, not even italics are permitted. You're not going to allow any HTML whatsoever, so there's no formatting, it's just text. There were recommendations that Homeway provided in regards to how the message would look as plain text, and they were very simplistic, like, thank you for contacting us, we'll get back in contact with you soon, kind of response. Whereas Previously, you've been sending a lot of detailed information. Um, you can send some information that will be automated based on the tags, but um, many of those tags, such as you know, sending them over to your website to view the property there, won't be um, accessible to them. That's just not gonna show up. Um, HomeAway is doing that to prevent people from simply clicking that link, going to your website, booking it, and then they don't get their commission from it. So it does make sense from that standpoint we don't like it. We don't think you guys like it. However, um, it, it does make sense about why they need to move towards that. Um, another aspect that uh, will be um, tied into this is the lead tracker integration. Now, lead tracker is a new feature that we have. And it, since the information that is being sent is not the actual customer information, you may or may not want to keep using the HomeAway contacts within your lead management software. And um, because it may be difficult to tie these visitors to guests when the reservations are actually made, you can choose to have us turn off HomeAway for part of Lead Tracker if you don't want your you know, Lead Tracker information being filled up with junk, basically. Now, that doesn't mean that it doesn't work with other inquiries. Um, and that we're not integrating with other services. The lead tracker will still work with some other sources, and it will also um, work with some of these new portal partners we're bringing on that are not gonna be restricting or stripping uh, content from the messages. So as long as they're not doing anything like that, you're gonna see their email address, you're gonna see the phone number, and that will allow the lead tracker to work as expected. Also, lead tracker integrates with your personal website as well. So if you had your website and somebody goes on there and they request, a, you know, they send a contact message, that goes into the VRM system under the lead tracking uh, functionality. Now, I don't know if we discussed that. Have we, Brittany, of a uh, lead tracker as a T with Brittany Lee yet? Brittany? I'm sorry, my controls were not letting me unmute for a second. Um, yes, we have actually covered um, Lead Tracker as far as the Tea with Brittany Lee, and that's available on our blog if you want to re-watch that. Um, at any point, you're able to do that, so feel free to do that. It's just virtualresortmanager.com forward slash blog. Okay, and I wanted to basically uh, let them know that they can find information about what Lead Tracker is, because if you don't know what Lead Tracker is, I'm talking and you're like, what is this thing I've never heard of? And it's fairly new. Um, so, you know, if you want to look back on the old team with Brittany Lee and see what Lead Tracker can do for you, then you will definitely want to see about looking in the past on the blog for that. Um, now, there is customer information that will be included with the inquiry. And I, I mentioned it before, and I will mention it again, that all Everything related to the guest information that is sent for new reservations created the home, through HomeAway is not changing at all. Um, this hasn't been changed. The process is going to remain the same. You'll get the full details for the guests and everything if they actually make the reservation. These changes and this filtering only applies for inquiry. And when an inquiry is made, you will get the name of the guest, the dates they're requesting, the number of guests interested uh, in whatever property they're asking about, um, 
the comments that they have, but those comments are going to be cleaned out. If the, if the guest puts their phone number or email address in there or a link to the website or anything like that, um, then it will not be accessible um, in terms of uh, information that is coming one way or the other. And uh, most property managers are going to be moved by August 17th. I received some more information uh, that uh, this will impact most VRM customers by August 14th. So by August 14th, all VRM uh, property managers will be you know, using this uh, HomeAway filter message system and the uh, messages will be cleaned. So you want to make sure that you go in, if you're using the autoresponder, go in and clean up your autoresponder that you're using with HomeAway. So that's uh, also the HomeAway generated email addresses are going to last forever. So you can always use these to communicate with the guests in the future, but you won't know much about this guest. So just be aware of that. Perfect. Okay. Well, next up we have the HomeAway booking changes. And I know that there are a lot of changes getting ready to come um, with HomeAway. And um, so I'm going to get you and Emery to kind of talk about this and um, what are some of the things that are coming next from HomeAway that we should be aware of. Okay. Well, I, I'm not sure if Emery's too familiar with uh, the HomeAway booking changes, but the offline booking and inquiry-based booking is going away. Um, online booking has instant booking and 24 hour confirmation. And those are going to be the only two options. If you don't have online booking with HomeAway, you're not going to be able to use the software uh, platform with HomeAway because they're requiring this. So you're going to need to be able to take credit cards and you're going to need to accept the um, uh, either the book it now and you have 24 hours to confirm the reservation or cancel it or the instant online booking where you get the little lightning icon. The difference between them is that the, and they have different names for them. I'm going to refer to it as online, instant online booking with the little icon, but it may not be how they refer to it as. But with that option, that means that as soon as the person pays, it's confirmed. They're paying the full prepay. The other option is the 24 hour confirmation. And what we have with that is that the, uh, Feature exists for it to be authorized only. If a payment goes through HomeAway, we can make that appear as though it's being charged at that time, but it will come into the reservation as a $0 payment. At that time, you can reissue it, and then it will mark it as confirmed. Basically, you're paying it up, the prepay amount, it's marked as confirmed, and then HomeAway will be using the back-end systems to discover that that reservation has been marked confirmed. Or within that 24 or 12 hours, however they have it set up for you, that will be canceled. And they will see that canceled reservation as well and appropriately um, you know, refund the money for if they got travel insurance for HomeAway and things such as that. So, and that's it for the HomeAway booking changes. And if people have questions about those, obviously we'll, we'll answer those questions towards the end. Absolutely. And just don't forget, you can put them in the question and answer section. And Chad, I have seen your question and I will get to it at the end of the webinar for sure. Um, but you can also put things into the chat. Um, just so you guys know, I also added the link for the lead tracker recap. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with our lead management tool, um, you can go ahead and check out that webinar, learn a little bit about lead tracker. And if you have any questions, um, our support staff is always happy to answer those for you. Um, all right, so next up we have new Vacation Bridge features, and this is my personal favorite part of this webinar. So perk your ears, get ready, um, because Jonathan is about to blow you away with some awesome new features that we have coming with the Vacation Bridge. Well, actually, um, Emery, do, do you want to give any input on uh, some of the new features we have coming out? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. So what we're going to do is we're going to be redesigning the Vacation Bridge portal configuration area. And this is to make it easier to use and make it a bit make a bit more sense 
uh, about the pieces and connecting those. And so this change will be put in place in a few months and then additional development will happen from there. Okay. Um, also, we, um, we've had questions about the security deposit waiver um, versus the damage deposit. Um, portals such as HomeAway only have binary choices. That, that is, you can only have the security deposit waiver or the security deposit. Some people call it damage insurance. So you either got the damage insurance or the security deposit. There's no choice to add or remove those from the website. So we've added a method by which the security deposit or SDW can be applied, but it's gotta be one way or the other for all properties. If you see the security deposit showing up and want it to be the security deposit waiver only, or if you see the security deposit waiver only and want it to be the security deposit showing up instead, please just, just let us know and we can put that um, change in place for you. Um, the same type of on or off by default applies to travel insurance as well. We have reached out to HomeAway about this uh, to say, hey, can you make it so like pets, you know, you can say, oh, I got pets, I don't have pets. Can you make this happen with the travel insurance for property managers and the damage insurance for property managers to say, hey, I'm going to decline and choose the security deposit instead. Um, at first, they didn't understand my question. Then they said there's no plans for that at this time. Then they went further to say um, that they, you know, I asked someone else. They didn't understand the question either. So I've asked them again, and I'm still waiting for a response. So um, we're still waiting for input on that. It doesn't seem like um, they're moving towards making that an option for us. So we need to either get information from you um, if you want it on or off. And currently, um, previously, we've been using it as a configuration in the VRM system. And part of the redesigning the VRM system portal configuration area will be that we're going to put this vacation bridge specific option to allow uh, you personally to choose whether you want that enabled or not. But until then, we're going to be putting it in manually. It does apply to all portals. Um, so it's going to automatically add it in for all portals. If we come across a portal that says, hey, we can uh, send this in and allow them to toggle, then we will build that into our vacation bridge functionality. But the portals don't have that. So until they do, then you know it's not available. So I'm going to let uh, Emery talk about the HomeAway uh, online booking 4.0 functionality from this point, since he doesn't, you know, I've been hogging the conversation the whole time, so. Yeah, so the online, home away, online booking 4.0, uh, we carry that over and made some adjustments and minor enhancements. Um, uh, this is, you know, where we do all the price quotes and booking, making reservations and things like that. Okay. Um, yeah, and really, we're just looking at their API documentation at the moment. So um, we don't know all that they have to offer within the 4.0. We know that that uh, um, the security deposit waiver issue is not included in this functionality. So maybe 4.1, they might have it. So um, as for other minor enhancements. Um, there's no way for the HomeAway, FlipKey, or other websites to mark the VRA is signed in the same way as VRM because there's no signature box in those sites. Instead, the VRA will say VRA signed using and then the name of the portal, and you may have seen this. We've added a feature that allows the VRA to not be marked signed at all if the booking comes from a portal. Um, that way you can direct them to the um, guest extranet to say, here, you need to go there and sign up there. Um, if you want to change the way this works, send in a help ticket to help at vrmgr.com, and we'll put that into place for you. The um, functionality when it comes to uh, turning that on and off um, is something that we can put into place. Eventually, we will be making it so you guys can turn that functionality on and off. Um, and this is, again, applies to all portals. You can say, okay, I want no VRAs to be marked sign if the reservation comes online. Now, there is also the fact that the welcome home system can send out a message 
that, oh, the VRA is not signed. Okay, you can say if the VRA is not signed within one day, send out a message through Welcome Home as an email for them to visit the guest extranet. And that would allow them to go and sign the VRA there without having it automatically marked signed by it being made through HomeAway. Now, HomeAway does have a checkbox and things like that to say, you know, hey, um, I agree to the terms and conditions and the vacation rental agreement, but they don't actually sign it. So we can't say this person signed it. Instead, we say VRA signed using, and that's the reason there's that difference. So going into Welcome Home, another, I guess you could call it minor enhancement, but maybe a major enhancement for some, is that we hope to integrate the marketing codes within the Welcome Home system. That means that if a specific marketing code is chosen, that can send out a message. Because the marketing codes that are now tied to the portals are special compared to the marketing codes that are normally under the marketing code list. As a matter of fact, if you go under the marketing code list, you won't see the marketing codes that are actually tied to the portals, even though they exist when your reservation goes to make, if your reservation is goes to make a reservation, they'll be able to choose those. So what we will eventually have, which is still you know, some time out, but we will have these uh, function, functionality uh, added in the future, is that when the marketing code matches, you could say, okay, if I'm using the HomeAway marketing code, we know that the reservation is coming from HomeAway or the reservationist chose that they heard about it through HomeAway. Therefore, you can send specific messages based on the portal where the um, reservation was created. This is similar to the autoresponder, but it would actually apply to the um, creation of the reservation as well as possible future drip campaigns where you can say, oh, well, okay, um, one year after the reservation's made, let's send out another message to all the people who are using this marketing code. Let's send out you know, a message. Um, any of the event messages will be, be able to be tied to these marketing codes and that ties to the reservation, therefore, there is a plethora of options that you will be able to have in regards to that. So, and that, that's pretty much it when it comes to the uh, other minor enhancements we're working, working on. Awesome. That was so great. Um, so now comes the portion where I start giving you guys rapid fire questions. Um, I have a couple for you guys. Um, but if anybody else has any questions that they want to go ahead and put in, use the Q&A feature um, in the Zoom uh, interface and the, those will go directly to me or you can go ahead and put them in the chat i'll be monitoring both of those so you can do either one no problem um the first question that i got was from um rhonda holiday and she said our bridge and website is a saturday to saturday booking only but there are exceptions which we need to book over the phone do you think that that will be stripped quote unquote if we try and explain it to a guest you're going to be able to put in the name of the property, but you're not going to be able to put in, and they'll see, they might see your company name. I'm not sure if that's going to be strict or not, but, um, and the information that would be filtered, however, is if you were to say, oh, go to our website at this address and look at this property, those are the types of things that'll be filtered. If you say, you know, Oasis West doesn't apply, then that wouldn't be filtered because that's just, you know, a regular string. If you said something like, oh, well, give us a call at this phone number so we can discuss it, they're going to strip that phone number out. So um, that's a conversation you're going to have to have with HomeAway about how to deal with those types of scenarios. Um, anything to do with the filtered uh, messaging or um, if you contact HomeAway, they refer to it as what? Uh, secure messaging. So any, any of the uh, communication you have with them in regards to their functionality about the messaging will need to um, you know, go through them because they're the ones who are implementing this change. Um, I think that if you're just saying, oh, here's a list of properties, you'll be okay. But if you're putting phone numbers, email addresses, web addresses, things like that, those are the things that are gonna be stripped because they don't want you sending them off to the website and just grabbing that customer that they have worked to get to their website uh, to actually do the online booking. 
Perfect. Okay. So, um, Rhonda, if that didn't answer your question, feel free to chat me about that again and I can get some clarification for you. Um, but I, I felt like that answered the question. Um, for me personally. Um, all right, so uh, the next question that I had on here was from Chad and he said, um, going back to the home away filtered messages, any idea if we'll be able to redirect to another home away or v VRBO listing? I'm assuming that, you know, if they already had the property booked or, you know, maybe there was some issue with the property or something that and it accidentally got booked or it was referred as a lead, um, will they be able to redirect them to another property as long as it's on Homeway or VRBO? I don't know if you'll know that, Jonathan, because you are definitely, um, you know, not working with Homeway or anything and they're a little bit hard with their uh, stuff sometimes, you know, reading all those documentation, it's long and, you know, cumbersome. So. Um, we had a presentation that HomeAway provided to us um, a few weeks ago, and they went over a lot of details in regards to this. And as software providers that were uh, involved, we had questions, and those were the same types of questions. So a lot of the questions that you are asking are questions we asked them as well, because you know it's like, wow, really? And that was the first we heard about it. And then um, we said, okay, well, when is this coming out and when can we tell people? They're like, well, you can tell, start telling people tomorrow, the day after, because that's when we're going to start telling them. I was like, okay, well, that's pretty short notice, but, you know. And then they stated that, however, almost all this will be going into effect in August. So that gave us a little bit more time. Um, however, we did start getting a lot of questions <laughs> right off the bat from people who were on that list of um property managers that were changing over early. So so in regards to the question of whether or not you can send to the HomeAway site another listing, they said they do. Uh, now, this is coming from what we heard in the presentation. So, you know, I can't speak for them. If you want a definitive answer, you'll have to ask HomeAway. But they said yes. Is if it is a HomeAway URL, they're not going to strip it. That means you could and in the case of Rhonda's uh, question, you could send them the URLs um, to those particular property listings. And uh, Chad, if you wanted to say, oh, this property is booked, uh, go over to this other home away listing, that should work. And I also think that if you send them to other companies that are the uh, home away uh, channel partners, those should work as well. It's not going to strip out the vrbo.com, the homeaway.com. Instead, it's looking for ones that are not affiliated, affiliated with their company. Awesome. That was a brilliant answer, Jonathan. Well done. Um, all right. And I have one more question. It's from Elizabeth and she says, has anyone used the Airbnb iCal link successfully yet? I would love to hear how it went. That's a great question. <laughs> hmm. Emory, you have any input on this one? No, I haven't used the Airbnb yet. Okay. We had someone, I can't remember who, that used it, but we never heard back from them. And we also had the, the iCal links are not limited to Airbnb. There was another third party provider that was asking about using this functionality and they started using these iCal links. And because they tied to the specific properties, they were able to get availability information from that. So if you try it with Airbnb and you have trouble, let us know and we'll work on that. However, if you have a situation um, with, um, you wanna set something up with a third party, that's fine as well. It's not limited to Airbnb. This is not the Airbnb link. This is the iCal link. And iCalendar is a very uh, common format across the industry that can be used for, for a lot of third party sources. Um, if you have any trouble with any of those third party sources due to the format of the iCal links, we'd like to hear back from you. But everybody that has interacted with it um, has been successful. Uh, we just haven't heard about people using it for Airbnb. We heard it, people planning to use it, but we didn't actually go back and say, hey, how did that work out for you? So if you try it out and you have trouble, send us a message and we'll look into it. Awesome. And I have one last question for you guys. Will there be anywhere in the VRBO slash Homeway dashboard 
where the actual guest's email will remain. This sounds like what FlipKey has done, but on FlipKey, FlipKey, we can still access the guest email on FlipKey dashboard, but it does not port over into leads. It comes as TripAdvisor at TripAdvisor.com. And I think that I know your answer, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking that uh, that you had addressed, sort of addressed that earlier, that there will be no place um, where you can access that guest's previous email or that, that guest's email address and their contact information. Well, I hate to refer you guys to HomeAway to get answers for uh, most of these things because that's the point of our presentation. I do not know if they're going to have a way to access that through their dashboard. You can ask them about that. Um, one nice thing would be that if they did do that, you can actually enter that manually into the lead tracker functionality. I don't think they're going to offer that. I think they are going to have a, um, like FlipKey does, where is it a specific email address that ties to that customer email address, but I don't think they are ever going to link that back to you. Um, they will have a code that maybe the customer can provide to you that will link it when they're creating the reservation or after they've created the reservation so you can know, oh, it was that guy. But I do not know if even after they create the reservation, if it will let you go back and tie it to those previous um, communication channels. Perfect. Okay. Well, that was all the questions that I got um, from people. If you do have questions, you feel free to add those into the question and answer section, and I will go ahead and answer them or get them answered. And you're very welcome, Elizabeth. Appreciate it. Glad that you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, we are going to announce our next month's Tea with Brittany Lee. So next month, we are talking about how to easily track housekeeping and save time using this tool. This is the announcement that everybody's been waiting for, um, that our clean tracker is going to finally be ready, and we're so excited that you guys are gonna get to use it. It is an amazing tool, it's so powerful, and it does so much more than just housekeeping, um, but we were just trying to keep the term simple so that everybody would kind of understand what we were talking about. Um, so you guys are gonna wanna register for this webinar. If you have not registered for it, um, we now with Zoom, we have a limit on the number of registrations that we can take. We can only take 100 people on our webinar. So make sure that you register early because this is one of those ones where we could have a lot of people on here. Um, getting some training on how to use Clean Tracker. Um, and if you have multiple people at one company and they all want to register, that's great. Go ahead and do that. But you're going to want to make sure that you go ahead and register early for this one. It's going to be in August. Um, and we're really excited to be announcing slash demoing this tool for you guys. Um, you can register for that at bit.ly forward slash TWBL 2017. Um, that little link right down there at the bottom of the screen. Um, that link will take you directly to the Tea with Brittany Lee page. And if you notice, um, if some of you have visited that page, that actually has the complete Tea with Brittany Lee archive. We have 22 archived episodes about things that have happened at VRM, um, tools that we've come out, come out with, um, um, even, you know, we, we do a training every single year on how to do your 1099s, all of that good stuff. It's all in there. So you can check that all out. Um, and then I'm super excited because in September, I am going to be hosting the brilliant and wonderful Connie Hutchins, and she's going to be coming on and she's going to talk about how to get more sales with these eight brilliant marketing tips. We are literally unpacking all of our best secrets for you guys on this webinar. And I'm really excited. I can't wait for you guys to um, sit in with us and have the marketing team give you guys some really great ideas about how to really ramp up your marketing for 2018. There are a lot of changes coming. Um, and there are a lot of things that you maybe don't know that you need to be focused on. Um, so we're going to cover a lot of those things in this webinar. So make sure you register for that and the registration again, bit.ly forward slash tw. WBL 2017 and that'll take you to the page where you can register for that the registration for, for that will be open tomorrow so it's not open today it'll be open tomorrow um, but that's two months away from now so I really hope that everybody enjoyed this webinar and um, 
I'm getting a Zoom message from uh, from Jonathan, so I think he's probably um, wanting me to wrap it up and <laughs> not talk too much because I tend to do that. But I just want to say thank you so much to all of you guys for showing up today, uh, for taking time out of your schedules. The replay of this webinar is going to be available on our blog. If you have questions, you can always um, send questions to help at vrmgr.com. We take pride in having one of the best support systems in all of the industry today so if you ever need anything or you need help with any of the tools that VRM provides any of the thousands of wonderful features that we have we are always happy to help you guys and um, help you learn and use the tool most effectively to help you uh, get the most out of your VRM marketing system so thank you again Jonathan um, thank you Emery for coming on today I really appreciate it and I hope you guys have an amazing um, rest of the week and an awesome weekend. Thanks.